It's gonna the overview for the blade trailer. We're gonna go through all of its components, and then later on we're gonna go into how to operate each subsystem. Number one is uh, we got all the uh, normal hookups, so we got air and electrical hookups. Uh, right underneath, we got the uh, turntable. We got the uh, fifth wheel wedge. We got the alignment arrow that's right here for the turntable to align it. Up here, this rubber mat here is the dedicated front loading zone. So you only load onto this here, this rubber pad here. You don't load anywhere else on the gooseneck. Very important. Right here, we have the front landing gear. So if you're loaded, you can un uh, uncouple when you're unloaded without these. But when you are loaded, you are to take this off. And then you just slide this back. Then we're gonna be on a truck, so it'll be a little higher off the ground. Then you'll sneak this underneath. So this, if uh, you have a blade and you want to go and uh, get some fuel, you want to uncouple while it's loaded, or God forbid something goes wrong with your truck, you can uncouple it. So that's how you use these front landing gears. Put this back. So you have the height adjustment here, so you can you have multiple stages. Uh, the steering system, you have the, the bearing. Up in here, you have the steering mechanism itself. It's full of grease now, it's all new. You definitely wanna keep that all greased up. That's when uh, it's all happy like that. Here we have the steering system. Right now it's in bypass mode, so this operates like a normal trailer. The axles are fixed in the back. So these are the hoses that come from the front cylinders here. This just recirculates the oil. If this if these here are not connected to anything, that's gonna deadhead, and then you can wind up breaking something inside. So very important, you always need to have something connected on here. Either you have this bypass, or you have these hoses that go to the steering. Always something that's connected to it. So right now, we're, it's as if it's a normal trailer, so we have these connected to the bypass. Coming down here, you have the normal landing gears. You have a shim point for the gooseneck, and then each of the caissons has a shim point. This one is a special shim point. We're gonna go through that when it goes to loading. Each of the locks, there's dual locks. So on, on each one that extends here, you can you always operate them from, from this side here. Reason why you operate from this side is because this is the body valve to activate these legs. So everything's in one spot here, one, I guess, control center. Uh, moving on to the legs here, there's the lock pin. Don't forget the lock pin before you uh, put the landing gear down because you will break it. It's just so when you go down the road, it doesn't sneak down on you. It's so obviously all the hosing to loop all the way around. You have a, uh, a cone rack here that's a little buried underneath, but if you would coil it correctly or differently is a better word, you'd be able to use the cone rack. Here is the uh, hydraulics. So the self-enclosed power pack. Make sure when you open this, you use these locks here, especially in the back one here, because this can go a little too far and the wheel can come and strike this wheel. So just make sure to lock this before you, uh, you, you set off and you do a maneuver. Very important. Standard Honda engine here. You got your tank that needs to be between full and three quarters at all times. This is the uh, well, block valve here that does uh, the brains of the operation. This is the controls for the steering. I'm gonna go through that later. This here is the controls for the uh, air ride. You got your pressure gauge. You can correlate to how much weight is on the trailer. Right now, this is locked. So whatever the leveling valve decides, that's what it's gonna do. If I press this in, it's in call manual mode. So I can take air out or I could put some in. Whenever you're in this mode, if you have an air leak on your air ride suspension, it will bleed down to nothing. So do this, go under the overpass or over a hump or something, and always return it to here so it's locked. Because then if you do it the other way and there's a leak, you're gonna wind up not having suspension going down the road. Moving along, here we have the alignment arrow. That's right under here. That's for when you align that back turntable. This is the loading bunk here. This could be bolted at any uh, spot on this fifth beam. 
So either all the way at the back or all the way at the front. There's consequences of loading on either end that we're going to go through later. Right here is the locks for the extendable bumper. There's one on each side. So it's pretty easy it's just to pin and lock it. And we'll extend that later on. Right here is the, the bumper itself. Because it's extendable, you need to have some extra uh, wire. This is the uh, uh, remote control. So there's a wired remote as well as the wireless. You can go and plug it in here. The bumper has dual height. So you have these locks here. We're gonna go through that when we extend the bumper, why that's there. Got beacon light. You can put it on, uh, you have another switch here, uh, another plug in here. This is just to supply uh, 12 volt power. When it, the lights are on, this comes on as well. So you could have extra lights uh, if you wanna add them. Uh, the other side's to use the beacon. So uh, this one's just a spare one. You could use whatever you want. It's got the flag holders, the back here. Uh, coming back here. This is the, the lock for the steering. Um, this is just a pin that uh, essentially, it's, I wouldn't say there for looks, but the hydraulic system locks automatically whenever you are disconnected. So this is just an added security to it. Right now it's loose, it hasn't moved. So later on, before you do any steering, obviously this needs to be inside of the holder. Steering cylinder on this side. And here we have quite a bit of stuff that goes in. This is the air and electrical lines. Uh, they come from here. They come, uh, I wound up in here. They usually get wound up there. We're gonna do that later. And then also too, there's an air supply to unlock the locks. So there's quite a bit of stuff in here that uh, just when you're extending the trailer, this is basically gonna be empty whenever it's extended. And when it's retracted, it's gonna be back full of stuff like this right now. This is a spare tire rack. You can mount them both ways. So you'd mount the inners that would go inside and the outer, so you'd be about to here. Two tires. Um, this is the coil that uh, whenever you're coming back uh, closed, is uh, best to have these coils here. Just because if you do run it with a very long coils, the braking response is very reduced. Well, not reduced, but delayed. So um, it's. Uh, I would strongly recommend that when you do come back, you always hook up these coils just to get a much faster response. What I'm gonna do now is uh, we're gonna set the block as if we were gonna pin on this uh, the very first time. So they could have another truck that was on here and that had a fifth wheel that the V-shaped was, uh, was much uh, more inset. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that steering block is, is out further. Just so when you do hook on, you don't hook on just on the edge of the jaw, then it's very hard to uncouple and all that. So you just, you could just go in, you back it off until it's flush, I'll show that. And then after that, then you can come back up as if it's a regular trailer here. Another thing, we're gonna hook up as if we're going down the road with this trailer that's uh, just going down normally, so no steering. I mentioned this in the overview, but very important to make sure that this is on and also not half disconnected neither. It's like this, it won't work neither. It really does need to be closed. There's a little red button here. Make sure that that's snapped out here. These hoses here, they don't need to, to do anything. They're just dead headed here. There's just a nice holder to put it here. So we're gonna couple onto this as if we're just going to a job site, there'll be no steering. I'll go underneath, take my one and a quarter uh, socket. Just need a half inch drive. Take out these clips here that hold this ring. do is you would back it up like this right now this actually backed up quite a bit because it just came out of the uh, factory floor but right at the front you'll see that the wedge is is uh, flush with this block here that's pretty well as far back as it needs to be to match any fifth wheel so once that's flush like that so I back that off sometimes you need to pull a little bit on it just to see where you are so right now you can take this center it like this this plate back over put these safety clips this this now we're gonna hop in the truck and hook on
going to uh, tighten the uh, 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 fifth wheel wedge that's underneath. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, flip these hoses. What that's going to do is now it's on bypass, so I can't move this. So I can go tighten it. It might be to one side. So I'm going to take these hoses, put it here. Well, I'm going to do a switch like this. And then I'm going to start the engine. I'll be able to wiggle it and tighten the block all the way in so it makes a nice contact on both sides. So what we'll do first is there's probably pressure in, in this one, so it's very hard to connect it when there's pressure. We'll go to the back here. There's a red button right here. So right now there's there's pressure in both circuits, M1, M2, so you can see there's pressure. So I just come in here, I just take this, take the pressure off like that, come in front. Take this connection out. And lastly, do the switch. And then whenever you do this, always make sure that there's these two are full so that you don't forget anything and also to prevent the dead head to this. So now that we're connected, now I'm able to move this block around. So I'll go to the back again. You could do it with a wired remote that just sneaks into the there's there's a connection right up here uh, you can do this with a buddy but the, obviously the best way to do this is if you take the, the wireless remote make sure always turn on onto one side here like this so make sure to turn this on and not this on first it's a bit of a particular thing with these lodars so and now if I turn this on, you can hear the valves try to move. If I turn this on, so now this remote's on, and this, this doesn't work anymore. So it's a bit of a particularity. Sometimes we get some, some clients asking why my remote doesn't work, and it's just simply they just turn this on before this. So I'll turn this on now, turn this remote. So now, now that I have this on, now I can steer. So it's gonna wanna steer the easiest thing the back axle the brakes are set so it's going to want to steer the front coupler so I'll start this engine wrench so I'll take off these clips here both sides this plate out, put it over a spot where you're not going to forget them. I'm going to do is I'm going to go as far as I can, and now here it's stiff, so I can take this remote. Right now, the only thing that's flexing is the rubbers in the fifth wheel. So now what you do is you just come up here, you just back it off a quarter turn. And now, that's just so that the system's not bound up unnecessarily. Just like so. going to do now is we're going to uh, line up the steering so this is as if you would be stretched out obviously we we'll put it closed because it'd be a lot of walking so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, align the front arrow first so what we're going to do is that we're going to get the truck either turn right or left line that arrow and then after we're going to go at the back and we're going to line the back end so you line always the front first then we're going to line the back end and then we'll talk about all the pressures so right now, if we take a look at the front fifth wheel, that alignment arrow is way off to the 
third pin here. So you want to be as close as possible to that. It gets pretty sensitive when he gets to that angle. So I'm going to tell him to move, go on the uh, passenger side. So now we're lined on that front arrow. So now what we're going to do is you're going to leave the air inside of the trailer so that the wheels can move easily. Before you do any of the uh, steering stuff, so you're gonna go in automatic uh, steering or manual. Uh, what you can do is, right now, the alignment's at, uh, 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 out in the middle, so now this is loose. If, you, uh, if this is bound up either one side or another, you can use the remote, turn it on, turn the manual switch on, that's the one that's closest to you in the toolbox, and then you can come here and just use the remote to wiggle this so you can have this free and what you do is then you just fish this back up in here so and now now that this is unlocked then we can go and do uh, some manual steering or some auto steering so now so now that the truck is uh, lined up with the front coupler the back end here, uh, there's full of air, so, so it's very important that the wheels have uh, well, the freedom to move like this. So if it's bound up uh, with the air brakes, you're going to line it, it's going to want to drag the wheels, so it's going to put pressure. So when you go off on the road, it might tweak over to one side. While we're, uh, well, pressure, while we're doing this, it's going to pressurize the system. Well, first we'll talk about pressure afterwards. So what you do is you take this one switch, put it on. And I forgot my remote up front. We turn this on. We turn on the remote, then we can hear the valves to go to start. So we're gonna start the engine here. And then what you do, you look at this arrow now, so we're off to the side. Just going to just go right here. What I what you do in, in the morning is you can go a little further back and forth just to un, unbind the, the system. So right there, shut off the remote. And now what's going on now is that once we have this this remote switch on here. That pressurizes both circuits. So there's two, there's the front half and there's the back half circuit. What you want to do is when you put on this one switch, it does both. If you put this circuit, it isolates the two. We'll go when we do a maneuver. This one, you want to have this one on. But when you're pressurizing it in the morning, you just want this one on here. We'll go through the differences later on of why you want one or the other on. Once this on, that's going to pressurize both systems. And reason why you want to have pressure in the system is the hoses are actually like springs so you want the springs to already be taut so that's going to prevent to have some dog track even if you lose pressure they're still going to have steering but it's just not going to track very well so it's going to go over to one side it's going to go on the other it's going to wander so if you wind up going on the road and there's a big drop in temperature well then the, the pressure will have dropped you want always want between 500 and a thousand this is set to you know build up around 700 so it wants to be at its happy place. Once it's, uh, say it's gonna uh, do it in the morning, it's cool, and then in the afternoon, it could easily rise up all the way to 2000. It's not gonna break anything. If it goes above that, it's gonna be reliefs. But if you come back here and you see the 2000 PSI, just redo this step, and as soon as you wanna move it, it's gonna wanna bring these back down to between 500 and 1000. So it's very important just to be, to come back here and, and check this to make sure you have some pressure so that when you do go around a corner, the trailer responds very quickly. So what we're gonna do now is the whole system's pressurized in line. So right now it's all shortened up and we're gonna show you when you turn with the, the trailer, this is in full automatic. So there's no pony motors running. There's no nothing uh, as far as just the system is pressurized. So the front's gonna be steering the back. And he's gonna do is gonna do a loop and he's gonna come back and you'll see the, the trailer come back right behind the, the truck automatic.
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, assisted steering. So what it is, is uh, on this steering mode, it's typically used for when you're gonna be uh, backing up and uh, the driver is gonna be in, in control of the trailer, but the operator in the back, so the remote can be either in my hands, which is gonna, for the, like the pilot car, or the uh, driver in the truck can have the remote. So what you can do is you're gonna back up and you want to just nudge it over a little bit just to kinda, uh, instead of placing the truck, you can place the trailer. When you do steer, there's still uh, you're still uh, in control of the trailer. The only thing that you need to watch out when you're in this mode is that, say I steer the, the axles all the way to one side, and all of a sudden the truck wants to steer to the same side, all of a sudden there's no room for the oil to go because the, the, the cylinders are already at the, its maximum and then the cylinders in the front want to turn as well. So what that's gonna do, it's going, there's some safety valves inside of the block, but it's not good to over pressurize the system, puts a lot of strain inside the steering systems, either front and back. So just when you do this steering system, just be sure that you're not going all the way to the maximum with it because whatever you do with the truck, it's still in control. There's another method later on that we'll show that really separates the two, but that's gonna be in the next step. So we're gonna do first, we're gonna start the engine, connect the wireless remote. He's gonna back up and he's gonna back up to one side. I'm gonna put it to straight, so it's gonna show that he's in control of the axles. It's gonna start to one side. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna turn it straight for him. So I'm gonna go in here. Fire up the switch, turn on the remote, then I can hear the valves. You got room, if you got a blade on here, sometimes you can't open this up. It's just nice to have this opened up like this. There's more air circulation, especially if you're in a really hot climate. So I'll start this up now. we did a, uh, a maneuver with the remote the truck is uh, is now straight with the trailer but now you can see that the wheels aren't uh, in, in sync with the coupler so now what happens is that now that I've added either or taken out to one of the circuits to either help them out back up or just to go around a, a gentle curve the automatic wasn't quite enough you could you could have used this me uh, method just to go around the curve just to help them out maybe delay the turn or something like that so now both systems aren't in sync. So now you need to go back in and just do the real alignment procedure just to put everything back into time. I put it in, the, in full manual. So what that does is it really disconnects the front steering and the back steering. So the front steering is free to do whatever it wants or when you're turning the truck and it won't affect the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off the truck on an angle and he's gonna move forward. It's gonna, he's gonna go straight and then these axles are going to stay uh, pointed in this particular orientation. And once he's going straight, just to show, I'm going to take this remote and I'm, and I'm going to steer it from one side to another. And the truck's going to be going straight, just to really demonstrate that you have complete control over this unit and it's independent from the truck. So, so the first one is assisted. The two that are on these two switches, then we're going to be on full manual. We'll start this up now. that 
the axles are, are still in that same spot. So what I do now is I can take the remote, I can make it steer over to one side, and whenever it turns with the truck, it actually doesn't control the wheels any. So we can crab walk this trailer like this, so it's gonna go all the way to this natural spot. And then if I want now, I can turn it over to the other side. When I stop, the axles are disconnected, so the coupler's not putting any oil back in. I can bring it all the way over to the other side. I set it, it won't move anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back to straight. And now it's just like a regular trailer. So this is very good when you have a maneuver going on the highway and you're taking a very tricky intersection, you want to delay the turning. This is definitely the uh, uh, method to use. So just signal my driver to stop. Now we would have this axle here. So now whatever alignment we have in the back and the front is no longer timed. So as soon as we do a maneuver like this and then say you're done and you want to go on the highway and then you want to go in full automatic, then you would have to stop. You'd have to realign the front, go back here, align the back. Make sure that only one of the switches is on, not both of them like you have now, just so you pressurize both circuits. And once they're back aligned, then you're free to turn this off, turn everything off, make sure pressure's fine, and you're going down the road on full automatic. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, be extending the trailer all the way out. So uh, step number one is to disconnect all the lines that are linking the gooseneck to uh, uh, the trailer section. You can extend it with all of the lines in, but it's very much so not recommended just because if you forget a loop and then you keep going and all of a sudden you can pull something out. So it's best practices just to disconnect everything. Number one, before disconnect it, there might be some pressure in the line. So you just come back here, you take this red button. So there's pressure, we're an automatic steer. I just pull this, that's gonna take them all out like that. Come over here, red button. Push it in, it will disconnect. Just slow that on top here. And you take this bypass block inside here. The reason why that is, I know you're not gonna be steering, but let's just say you're going ahead and you wanna avoid a hole or something. You always wanna put this in because now you can, you're able to turn. If you were deadheaded, you start doing one of these. It doesn't take very much to uh, over pressure the system then it locks something you might break something very important just to put this on here you make sure to leave this one empty obviously you don't want to connect your lines we'll go on the other side now make sure the trailer is full of air because you're gonna be using the trailer air to extend the trailer so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off our supply and our emergency supply and service Take out our electrical. We don't scrape our hands on anything, which I just did. And now we're gonna use the very long cable, so we can just go ahead and take these off completely. Like this. Before you extend, because while you're extending, you're going to be wanting to put shims in. Not necessarily these here, but they're obviously on top of everything. So we'll just take all this out. Now we've taken all of the hangers and all that. Just want to show what's left. We need to bring this here. This is the uh, air hose that's going to supply air to the locks. There's a ball valve up here. You're just going to pressurize this. There's another one here. So whenever you're going to be over there, you're going to be using this ball valve. If you don't have hair, just make sure to check this one. It's pretty simple, but sometimes I even forget it. Also, what's in here, this is going to be a very special shim. We're going to use this in a very 
special situation we're going to go through just one second and then you're going to have quite a bit of other shims i have some stacked on the goose neck right now uh sorry on the caissons so there's different sizes so just take them all and put up front because you're going to wind up using sometimes you know ahead of hand uh, ahead of time which shim to use uh it's going to be a uh, dark art as far as exactly which shim we're going to go through that as soon as we extend it all right, what we're going to do now is we brought all of the shims close. So now uh, we have air inside of our hose. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up this side. So right now there's going to be the pin that's going to hold this leg up so it doesn't go down on the highway. Take this out here. I like to do this before you start the engine. Then it minimizes the chances of it starting the engine and forgetting it. So take this out. Start the engine. That'll give us the hydraulic power. And then once we have that, we'll be able to lift the legs up just enough to take pressure off the caisson. I'm gonna unlock it. And once that's all disconnected, unlocked, then we'll be able to signal to the driver to start pulling ahead. And as the, the trailer comes out, uh, sorry, the caisson comes out of the trailer, what do you wanna do as the operator is you just keep an eye on that. And then you could just, uh, uh, cause when the caisson comes out, it's arched. So you're gonna go up and then when it comes back down, you're gonna go down with it. If you're too high or too low, the, uh, the truck driver is going to have a hard time pulling on it. You just want to take the pressure off of it is what you want to do with those legs. So we'll start this engine now. And this handle here is uh, what I want the trailer to do. So I want the trailer to go up. I go up like this. Before you start, just make sure that there's no hoses that uh, the legs going to pull on. So I want the trailer to go up. So I pull up on this. extended obviously there's a bunch of stuff that's still here so you clean all this off make sure everything's secure your load as well obviously put the pin back in here when you secure all these hoses is you just put these, these aluminum brackets the whole way down you start from your your all the way at the front and then you you, uh, you work your way back so if there's any slack here we're all the way out but say you were you weren't quite extended all the way you'd wind up and just do the last little bit of hose here if you start from the back and go to the front, then there's no place to put it. So just start your all the way back. And then once, once you're here and it's all loaded, just make sure to uh, check the shimming again. If you don't get the shimming right, then you have to kind of reclose it and be able to lift it up and put shims. If you have a loader handy, then you'll be able to uh, lift up that section and put a shim. The way it is now, which most sites, you would have to bring it back in and put some shims. So the way it is now, close it all up. You would line up the truck, you would uh, start up the engine, line up the rear with the uh, with just the one switch on. Once you're both aligned, everything's secure, then you're ready to go on the road and you're on automatic uh, west steering. And uh, the only thing you do in a hurry with a truck is get in trouble, so uh, go slow. Okay, so now that we have it fully extended, 
this this shim here, what this does is uh, this. So this case on is just a uh, inner out, so there's no intermediate sections. The other ones you could stop at any which uh, uh, stop that you want. This one is a very special spot because here it has this. Uh, um, this can pivot like this, and what that does is if you're going to be very short, there's quite a bit of camber in this trailer, and if it's too high, you'll see here at the back axles. Right now, the, the trailer is, is sitting relatively flat. If you look at the axles, the airbags, this one is about halfway and the other ones are about full. So it's still pitched up a fair amount. So what you can do if you want to have it so that, uh, say you're loaded and it's like this, or you load back here, this going to tip this front end like this too much. So what you want to do is you're going to take shims out and it's going to be nose diving before you load it. And when you load back here, it's going to want to pick it up. And also it's the same thing when you're going to load on the other side, say this load table was all, all the way up to here. All of a sudden when you're going to want to load, it's going to want to tip the nose down. So you're going to want to shim this up. So this comes in where this big shim comes in here is sometimes uh, when you're very short, say there's a four case on, uh, this shim here is you're, you're always going to wind up having this that it's going to want to have the first axle off the ground. So you can take this, take it off, and that's gonna tip everything back. This, this trailer's still gonna have arch in it, but at least you're able to tip this back case on back so that your axles can wind up equalizing. If you want, you can take this out. This can, can touch here, so you can have a very big angle to start, so you load at the back. Or you have this intermediate shim that can be placed in here. And what that does, it's, uh, it's the uh, difference between here uh, uh, the diff you know, just the uh, halfway point between them. So usually when you're of the very long blades, like at a 64 meter and up, you're wind up gonna be at a five beam. So you're gonna wind up having this. If you're a little shorter and you wind up loading at the back, you might have to put uh, this shim in just to pre uh, nose dive this thing. Just when you load at the back, it winds up, it comes out flat. So it's very important that when this, the back end is flat, you control it with this. And if you look down here, the third beam has quite a bit of a kink in it. So right now I know that that middle beam there would probably benefit from having another maybe 1.8 or 3.16 shim. So whenever, so I would mark down how many shims I put in. And when I would redo it again, I would take that shim and I would just put another one and then that'll probably wind up making flat. It's pretty close to flat the way it is. But if I'd redo it again, I would just put another shim right at that middle section just to put everything straight. What you want to do is when you load it, obviously there's only one spot at the front. The back, if you load it right where the middle axle is, then everything's gonna, even if so, if you have no arch in it, you load it, it's gonna want to stay the same way because the pivot point's in the middle axle. So as soon as you move front or back, they need to compensate with this shim here. It's gonna be the extendable bumper. There's pins on each side. What I'll do is I'll take these, put on top here. Make sure to disconnect your, your electrical line here. Don't forget it, because then you wind up pulling it out of your plug, obviously. Put this in here. On the other side, it's the same pin. Sometimes it's a little jammed up. Take this pin out. Now, sometimes there's, obviously there's very long, and there's, there's some slides in here and there's bearings, but sometimes you need a bit of help because somebody didn't grease it or whatnot. So these rings here are not to tow the trailer, very important. These rings here are just to hook onto uh, a pickup. You can hook onto a hitch, you can pull on it. Right now this should slide out like this. So there's stops all the way. This one goes all the way out to 20 foot. It starts to get a little tough. So at this point you would need the pickup. Get a couple of guys to help me. Now, depending on the camber of the trailer, this is going to move quite a bit up and down. So important as on this trailer, so if this here wants to stay, whenever the trailer shim correctly, it's going to be pretty well at its right riding height. But if you do want to bring it up, that's why you have this adjustment here, the bumper. This is just so it doesn't rattle, so you just slack this off, take off this pin, and you'll be able to move this upwards. 
that's going to give you more ground clearance here like this. So wherever you do need it, do that. And then obviously you would take this electrical cord. You wouldn't have any tire ups on it. And then what you do is you just do a couple loops around like this, just to secure it. Go back into here like this. Don't forget, once you're all the way here, you probably need somebody just to help you out, just to line up these holes, put the pins back in, and then you have the extendable bumper. So now what we're gonna do is, uh, now that's all, uh, uh, we've right to site, we have the blade, we're gonna take it off. Now we're gonna uh, 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 collapse the whole trailer back in. What we're gonna do first, as you can hear it now, is that we're gonna be filling the trailer full of air. Just because we use air to do those lock unlocks, there's not quite full of air. Sometimes you get stuck on the last uh, uh, well, lock, and then you're stuck to unwind the hose and go and fill it up with air once again. So just nice, make sure, build up the truck to 120, fill it all up with air. Once it's all done, then you disconnect everything from the front, coil it all back, and, and then put all the stuff away, and then make sure to have a spot for the shim, so when you take them out, you can just stack them, and then so you can uh, uh, collapse the trailer in one shot, you're not waiting on anything. Once it's all retracted, you want to connect this back on. I know that it's on the bypass now and it wouldn't hurt anything going like this down the road, but the only thing that it can do is this is going to come up with, uh, with some dirt, road grime. So you always want to put this back on. And it's also a nice reminder to have them both connected. And sometimes you need to play with the hose length just to get that right. bungee that up uh, on the right length then we'll just go on the other side and connect the coils don't forget this pin for your binding gear it's back push the shims over to the other side this hose back in don't forget to close the ball valve on top here just in case that in here you open it up and then you wind up bleeding all the air in your trailer. We're gonna feed this all in. And then what we do is take out the coils, connect them back on from the glad hands to the front, and then you'll be able to uh, go back to the normal trailer. We're gonna talk about the maintenance on this trailer. On top of doing the regular trailer maintenance, it obviously has all the steering components, so they all need to be maintained. They are more maintenance than the regular parts. 
So it's very important to, um, I say a week, so if you're running these constantly, every week you make sure to bring it in the shop and then uh, to grease all the steering parts. The braking parts while you're there, it's not much longer to do all the regular stuff as well. The more you grease it, the better lifespan you're gonna have on all the subcomponents. So starting from the front here, underneath here, you have this steering block here. It's not so much to grease to that it slides, it's just that these threads sometimes pile up with dirt. So it's just nice to take it out, clean them up, or put some more grease just to be sure that this moves freely back and forth. Also, if it's on your truck, just make sure to come and retighten this here just to make sure that you know if, if any slack did develop, you would wind up and have this uh, really secured into it so you have the best steering. If it's a little uh, slack, it's gonna either dog track to one side or another. So make sure to periodically check that. Right on that main turntable, there's a couple of grease fittings on here. You can see one that's here now. So you can go in, take a grease out. They come pre-greased from, from the manufacturer of the bearing. In here, these are the two cylinders that get pushed and pulled to uh, do the steering. Right in here, there's this big rod that gets pulled from the, the coupler. The coupler can turn 360 inside. The, the mechanism won't screw up. So, so this, but when it does turn, this gets pulled in and gets pulled out. So make sure that you grease the surfaces. Most importantly is right inside here, this grease fitting, there's one up front here. These two grease these slides that, that would rub very hard against this, this face and on this side as well. And if th those aren't happy with enough grease, then those uh, brass bars wind up sticking. And then these cover plates here can actually uh, snap off and then your brass plates are gonna be on the road. Very, very important to, if you're gonna grease anything, it's definitely these two. Well, actually, there's four, so on each side. Also, while you're here, there's a nut here that presses onto the uh, brass uh, slide. There's one here, and there's one in front here. And that's gonna do is that's just gonna snug them up. If those aren't snug, it's gonna do the same thing as if this front uh, wedge isn't all the way in. So there's gonna be a bit of slack in the uh, steering system. So just make sure when you do grease it, it's always nice to just come in here, just tighten them up, just to be sure that there's no slack in the system. There's a pivot point at the bottom, on top as well for this triangle piece. The cylinders have uh, 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 grease fitting on each end. And that's it for the front steering. regular dolly legs. Um, I like to put oil in front on top here. It goes down the screws. Makes it all easy. There's no maintenance inside of the caissons. The grease fitting on, on here. There isn't on here. doesn't pivot very much. Moving to the power pack. Whenever you want to put gas in the engine, you have this here. It's also a nice touch that when you do run it, if you have room, you can always run it with this open like this just to give the most of heat out of it. If you run it with everything closed, the engine does get hot enough that it melts the intake and goes inside the engine. Make sure to always, when you're running it, always have it up. Hydraulic tank is the ISO 15 that's in there. Don't go any heavier than that. There's no heat in the system or very little. Just keep it at that. So three quarters to full. Inside here, we have high pressure filter element. Uh, in the manual, it says the uh, filter element that's in here. I'm gonna change out of each year. You can just go in here, just take this off. There's also a filter element for the return on here. Uh, moving back here, you have the steering cylinders that are right here. Make sure these get greased as well. You got grease fittings inside of here. There's another flap, so you can grease in there at the back. And then these turntables each have grease fittings on each of the turntables. These uh, knuckles each have a grease fitting. Make sure that all of them get a about three to four shot. You always go until they, they start puking a little bit from, from the sides. Check air pressure. These ones, these particular ones don't have the inflation. Uh, just take your air pressure because these uh, 17 fibers are very sensitive to temperature changes. 
So just make sure to go in and make sure that they're happy, not too full or empty. Another maintenance item is these here. See, so there's a bit of grease on here. Just because these here, if they get a uh, well, bit of road grime and all that, and then the calcium or whatnot gets deposited here, and then they tend to freeze up in here. So just once in a while, come in here, just put a, a, a dab of grease to go uh, and help to make sure that this doesn't seize. The type of grease that you use on a steering system, use an EP2 if you're gonna run in some cold weather, so into uh, minus 20 and downward, 20 Celsius and downwards, use a, a EP0 uh, just because once uh, it's very cold, all the system has quite a bit of friction and a lot of uh, uh, strength is needed to do that. So sometimes the steering systems are very, very hard to turn in cold weather. So just make sure to clean up, put a, a lighter grease system and a grease com compound, and then you'll be able to turn freely.